Hey, Brian, what do you got for us tonight, sir? Uh, hi, Andrew. Um, I just had a question. Um, so I believe that the, the Bible is the Word of God, and I believe that yes. uh, the Bible is kind of the, the main way that, you know, God speaks to us nowadays. And so I, I've always kind of had this insecurity, like, like let's say back in the days when, you know, the Bible wasn't really widely available or, yeah. you know, even nowadays in parts of the world where it's illegal or maybe it's not in their language, you know. Right. I've always kind of wondered, you know, is it in those situations, like how would people still connect to God and like, you know, are they kind of like just, is it kind of like out of luck at, at that point? Or, you know, like I've, yeah. I've always just kind of wondered, you know. Yeah, that's a great question, Brian. Really appreciate you bringing that to the broadcast tonight. It may be the first time we've had this question. Uh, let me start by saying, you know, essentially we've got general revelation and then we've got what you could call special or unique revelation. Uh, and general revelation is the idea that God reveals himself through nature uh, and through conscience. Uh, so we've got the human conscience where people become aware that they are created beings, that they're not here by accident, that there's too much order in the world. Uh, and their conscience bears witness to this. Not only that, but uh, the righteous requirements of the law are written on an unbeliever's conscience, and it either causes them to accuse themselves or defend themselves in certain cases. Uh, but nevertheless, there's this sense of uh, morality and ethics that uh, brings them to conviction as the law, the righteous requirements of it are written on the unbelievers conscience and on their heart so uh, that's just showing them their death uh, the the Jewish person has the law the Gentile person has the conscience uh, the Jewish person has tablets of stone the Gentile person has those righteous requirements etched on the lining of their heart and mind so they're convicted by it seeing their need uh, for salvation so uh, I would say, first of all, we've got that in terms of general revelation. Uh, also, Romans uh, speaks of creation and how the invisible attributes of God are understood through everything that's made, and therefore uh, people are without excuse, so Romans 1.20 tells us. Uh, and, you know, it's not just Romans. It's also the 19th chapter of Psalms. It tells us that creation speaks uh, of God and in a language that every single person can comprehend. So God is speaking through his creation. God is speaking through nature. God is speaking through the human conscience. Um, and then I think we can go further now, uh, Brian. We can also say, as you rightly did, look, the Bible is not necessarily readily available everywhere today in today's world. So it's not just an issue of the past, it's an issue of the present. Furthermore, we could rewind uh, 2,000 years ago and uh, we could say, well, what about the people who uh, didn't have the New Testament? Uh, we, you know, they had a letter here or a letter there if they were lucky. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, what about all the people who were illiterate? They couldn't read. I mean... 70, 80 percent of the early church was illiterate. They couldn't have a quiet time. They had to have a loud time. They would get together in a church meeting and they might have one letter or two if they were super blessed and somebody would get up and read that letter aloud and everybody would listen because they couldn't read and then next week maybe they'd read the same letter all over again. So uh, you know, that is a serious uh, question, and I guess what I would say is it's not ultimately about the book. It is about the author of the book. I mean, the book is about getting to know the author, and the early church absolutely rocked the world even though they couldn't read. So we believe it's about our flashcards and our memory verses and our uh, spiritual disciplines of making ourselves read and memorize and that sort of thing. I mean, the early church, they couldn't engage in any of that, really. Uh, and yet, look at what was accomplished in and through them as God moved powerfully. How did he do it? He did it through relationship. And it just shows you that you can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved, and you don't have to be a scholar of the Bible. You don't even have to be able to read. 
Um, and ultimately, as creation and conscience bear witness to the existence of God, you start buying the idea, hey, there's something bigger than me. I'm not here by accident. This isn't random chance. And so if there's a creator God, I want to know him. And Jesus has promised, if you knock, the door will be opened. If you seek, then you'll find. Uh, so you're not going to remain clueless if you're truly pursuing him. That is God's promise. So, yes, the Bible is the word of God, but Jesus is the word of God. And that word can be implanted in you the moment that you call upon the Lord God for salvation. So, Brian, those are some of my thoughts on general revelation and what they might call a specific revelation or unique revelation uh, through the Bible, about Jesus, through the mouths of others. We've got oral tradition. We've got people sharing the gospel verbally. Uh, we've got messengers going from city to city 2,000 years ago. Uh, we've got missionaries today. Uh, we've got Wycliffe Bible translators. I mean, there is so much being done to share the love and grace of God around the planet. Uh, and ultimately, as incredible as the inspired book is, it's about getting to know the author. And whoever calls upon him is saved. Brian, uh, call us back anytime. Great to hear from you.